James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, and welcome to another edition of the Film Breakdown. We're going to take a look at Florida's offense versus Vanderbilt. As always, if you like the content, like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon, and check out the pod each and every Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis of the Florida Gators. Vandy's primary strategy in this game was to drop eight defenders. They frequently dropped eight into coverage, and they were counting on their defensive line with just three to get pressure on Florida. And that largely happened. We'll show a lot of offensive line film on this film study. Uh, this was the worst game of the year for Florida's offensive line, and it cost Florida at some important times in this game. But right off the bat, Florida came out knowing that Vanderbilt was, of course, going to play a lot of zone. And you're not going to see this on your screen, especially with this particular broadcast at Vanderbilt. Based upon where the camera angle was, a lot of these players are going to get cut off on the screen, just like what happened with the defensive video. So I will show you what happens. You're going to get a route from Tony that is going to come in behind the linebackers. They're going to play cover three. So you're going to get a cover three look from Vanderbilt. They're going to drop back and split the field into thirds. There it is. Run support safety coming down. Cover three look. There's your play fake. Draw that safety in. Trask takes a look. Knows he has cover three. Goes to his window throw, which was, just as we mentioned, coming from that side of the field. Magically onto your screen and to Tony for a nice first down. Copeland's going to run a slant on this play, and even though Vanderbilt's defender is going to have inside leverage, take a look at his shade. He's starting inside. He's trying to deny Copeland from running a slant. Copeland's still going to get him on it. Florida, of course, going to run this play fake. Why? You want to hold the linebackers to create a nice big window for you to throw your slant route. Copeland turns him, gets the inside. Now this is an easy completion. Plenty of space to make this pass. Copeland, as he tends to do, runs his slant to vertical. We've showed this on a previous, previous video. Again, right here, this has got to be coming along this line. He's going to do what he tends to do, and he takes this up further. This is going to cause problems not only for him, but also for Trask. These are little things that need to be cleaned up. But most importantly for Copeland, he is going to turn his hands over the wrong way. So he's going to put his left arm underneath. Now, you can do this. You can do this here. Uh, but he's going to go left hand, right hand over top. This is a much harder pass. You'd much rather see him do the opposite of this. Instead, while running, have his left hand be on top. You'd rather have him have his left hand be on top, right hand underneath, and come across the field like this, attacking the ball. This is going to open up his entire body and turn him further this way. This is a passive way of attacking the ball. So he winds up not running a good slant window. Again, he's got the receiver on his hip now. Give him a nice target down the line. He doesn't. He takes it to vertical. He's now ready to catch this football. And he compounds his problems by going left, low, right, high. That should be precisely the opposite. And again, you can catch the football that way. But you'd much rather see uh, when you're running that slant from this side of the field, you'd much rather see, again, the opposite. The opposite there. That ball gets on him, gets too far past him. That's an incomplete pass. That should not have been an incomplete pass. That should be an easy first down for Florida. Uh, for Copeland, we need to see him clean up that slant route. It's something that's been showing on film in recurring fashion. Florida's going to high-low a cover three. Nice play design here. They're going to high-low this cover three. And what you're going to see Vanderbilt do is you're going to get a dropper. Dropper here. Then you're going to get a linebacker who's going to slide into this window, and they're going to go off your screen. There's your dropper. Here's your linebacker in the window. Here's your low route and your high route. So we know the cover three dropper is taking away the deep third, which you see. Unlike what you'll see on Florida film sometimes, you do see Vanderbilt's defender trying to come downhill on this route. He's trying to get there. Copeland put a nice move on him, so he is, in fact, late. But a nice high-low. High, low in this part of the screen in between the linebacker who is here underneath the safety who is there. Good cover three beater. Nice, simple way to move yards. Florida has proven time and time again this season, if Kyle Trask gets any amount of time in the pocket, 
they will diagnose what you're doing on defense and they will run coverage beaters and they will attempt to take the maximum yardage play as we like to say with Dan 2.0 which is just excellent football and it's one of the reasons why Florida's offense is so successful even though it struggled in the first half of this game quite a bit which we will show you why. It's third down and eight, and you do not often see what what teams are going to uh, do with Florida with what Vanderbilt did. Vanderbilt's going to play a cover zero. So this safety is not going to play safety. He's already way too low. And in fact, at this point in time, if you're Kyle Trask, you can basically bet that you have cover zero. A lot of times in the NFL, you'll see more gutsy coordinators simply line this guy up somewhere right in here, which I would prefer if I were running cover zero. A uh, reason for that is you're able to get your blitz home quicker. And even if the quarterback knows you're in cover zero, fine, take your chances covering. If you're going to wind up being this far away from the line of scrimmage, you're sort of putting your safety in no man's land. You can also start your safety down here and at least have them attempt to rob any sort of slant route that happens if you want to wind up getting deceptive. Vanderbilt's not going to do that, which means Trask knows right away he's going to look here at this Tony matchup. That's his best one-on-one -on -one route runner. He's going to take that matchup all day long. He knows he has cover zero. Right away, he opens up, takes a look at his read, and he's just going to wait for Tony to beat him. Tony beats him bad. Again, take a look at this move. A step to the outside, gets him flat-footed going backwards. He's flat-footed falling backwards, and he basically just barely touches Tony, trying actually to tackle him. But that move Tony puts on him is so good that he can barely touch Tony as he goes past him. Trask, again, just waiting, delivering a nice soft ball for an easy Florida touchdown. That is how you beat an aggressive cover zero. Again, Tony, at this point in time, this season on film, is just uncoverable man-to-man. -man. It's why so many teams have been giving him a lot of attention. When Florida gets Kyle Pitts back, uh, this will make things just that much more difficult for opposing defenses. Florida did not have a great day running the ball against Vanderbilt, despite Vanderbilt's rushing defense being so poor. That was largely due to the offensive line missing a few blocks here and there. On this play, Garage, who I think is Florida's best offensive lineman that starts at this point in time, is going to come pulling across the formation to get a block here. Florida's tight ends, who have been doing a much, much better job blocking, especially from what we saw last year. We often talked about on the podcast uh, you're going to have Zipper here on the edge. He's going to get a nice block on the seal. And you're actually going to have a moment here where this could be a nice a nice run. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here comes Garage coming in to get a block here. This is DeLance who struggled, not surprisingly, mightily in this game. And then here's Braun. Here's Braun, Florida's highly rated four-star prospect who's getting some playing time here early at guard. Braun is going to miss his block. He's not going to get a good block here. But the real problem is DeLance loses his. Now, you can't see the end zone cam, but if DeLance, who should have had, again, leverage here. Look, DeLance has the leverage early, which is why it's frustrating with DeLance. Again, I know he's trying his hardest. He's just not good enough. It's getting to be very disappointing that we're not seeing Florida give more significant minutes to a different right tackle. This is just not sustainable, but DeLance here gets the jump that you want. He's got the leverage. He has, he has leverage on him. He's pushing him the way that he wants to push him. He's going to lose that. He's going to let him be free. And he's going to let his lineman into the hole. And because of that, if DeLance gets a seal here, and obviously if Braun does his job and gets a seal here, Naquan might score touchdowns. Now, Dan Mullen designed some really great run blocking plays. We've talked about this on the podcast since Dan Mullen got here. He's excellent at designing run plays. These have not hit pay dirt. And the primary reason has been has been the offensive line. The offensive line is much better this year than it has been, but in this game especially, it really let us down. Again, if DeLance just holds his block, there's still a chance that Naquan slides out of here, even with Braun not getting a great seal on his. But with DeLance losing his block, again, nothing he can do. He loses it. There's Quan getting contacted heavily. There you can see the arm. And down he goes. By contrast, take a look at Guraj, who had a much harder block to have to make. He had to pull all the way across to seal his man. And take a look at Guraj. Again, his man is completely out of the play. And that's what you want to see. You're going to see this a couple of more times in the film study today. There's good news, bad news. Good news is at some point in time, Florida is going to have more talented linemen playing. 
The bad news is, despite the fact that we seemingly have those guys in the roster right now, we still haven't seen a lineup that does not heavily involve DeLance, who continues to be a weak spot week in and week out. Third down and four, Vanderbilt is only going to bring three, as they've been bringing all game. Xavier Henderson is going to wind up running here. Nice in route. Trask is not going to be able to hit this in route when he wants to hit it because he's going to get pressure from guess where. If you guessed right there on Delance's side, you are correct. Delance is worried about a blitz here and being two on one, which he tries to signal. He tries to signal this, but he's not actually coming. Don't worry. There he goes. He's going to drop back. Here comes our dig route here which Trask is going to want to hit for sure. Puts the foot in the ground, ready to throw. Unfortunately for him, doesn't like what he sees. Now he opens up here, still doesn't like what he sees. This is one of the greatest things about Trask. All right, now we're in trouble. Delance has allowed his man to push him again. Push him all the way back into the quarterback, but Trask spin move. We talk a lot about how Trask is not fast, but that does not mean he's not athletic. Great feel for the pocket. Great spin move. Again, immediately look. Look where his eyes go. Straight downfield. He's not panicked. Ball field is moving slowly for him. Players moving slowly for him. Finds his target. There is Xavier Henderson who just sat in the zone and remained open. He was open the whole time. Florida converts a first down on third and, a first down on third and four. Again, largely due to Kyle Trask escaping a three-man rush that got to him rather quickly that in my opinion was the biggest reason why florida had a little bit of difficulty scoring early and really throughout the game despite racking up tons of yards at certain times florida was unable to move the chains for a couple of reasons but a lot of times it had to do with pressure from vanderbilt's d-line it's first and 15 here i thought florida had a little bit more conservative calls or a few more conservative calls than we've had in the past especially given how well Florida's offense was playing. This is the first quarter. Vanderbilt 10-7 at this stage. Vanderbilt has six in the box to start, but he's peeling out to play pass, but they're bringing a strong safety down heavily against the run. So Vanderbilt's not surprised Florida's going to run here. Vanderbilt's plus one in the run game right now. Again, Florida is winning at the line of attack just for a moment. But we are going to lose here, a block, and now we're going to fill here in this hole. And this play is really only going to go for three yards or so. So pre-snap, this is not a great look to run pre-snap. Florida with five, and then Vanderbilt with six in the box. Again, Florida can't be sure. He's going to wind up flaring out here to cover. We also have the safety coming down here. Not a great look to run here. Kind of surprising that Florida was choosing to do it. Uh, I think early on, because of the pressure Vanderbilt was getting, it was affecting some of Florida's game planning uh, with regards to not wanting to take a big, a bigger negative play on first and 15. Uh, this was something, again, we hadn't seen as much this year from Florida, but this is definitely a conservative call here early in the first quarter. So the previous play, Zipper had come out on this side of the field, had a wide open uh, pass that he could have caught and probably would have resulted in a first down or something close to it. Instead, he drops it. This forces third and 11, third and 11. And guess what you're about to see? Vanderbilt is going to do what do you think? Oh, they're going to drop eight, right? Three rush. They put a bunch in the line to say we're coming after you, Kyle Trask, and then we're going to fan out. And we are going to drop eight into coverage and hope that we can get you before you have time to complete a pass because we know you're going to if you get time, you always do. Florida needs to win at the point of attack and we're not going to. Who is this? Uh, this is DeLance. That's DeLance, unfortunately. So this looks pretty good. Uh, it's not so good. All right, this is just not really great. Now we're running for our lives. Now Trask actually gets away. He's up and going to get away, and then Delant says, you know what, I think you should get sacked. I'm going to punch you in the face, and then I'm going to block him for good measure. Look, I got you. I'm blocking you. I'm still blocking you. Okay, one more time. So let's get beat off the edge. Now we're late. Trask is going to get sacked. Meanwhile, we've got a pancake here. This guy's dead, right? These guys, good job here. That's real nice. What you want to see. That's going to be a first down. 
Trask is like, all right, no problem. I got out of here. And then shoulder to the face. No, you don't. You put yourself right back on the ground and then watch me get this block here. Thank you very much. Let's go get a punt. A couple of plays ago, we showed you that although Vanderbilt had six in the box, they actually had one peel to play dedicated pass. Florida now catching on to this in the second quarter. Dan Mullen says, okay, well, if you're going to pull one of those guys out of the box and you're already light in the box, I'll add a tight end here and gamble. And if you pull a guy out and you want to bring a safety down from somewhere else, I'll take my chances that I'll be able to get you with a run play. And here it is. And this is a heck of a block right here, which is really the main reason why I'm showing you this play. This is Tony. Uh, we talked in the podcast about Tony doing all the little things, even when he's not getting the ball. And this is how you do the little things. Again, just take a look right here. Boom. Goodbye. That is a block. That is how you play physical football, right? This is everything you want your offensive identity to be. Hey, you think we're a finesse team? Boom. You'll think about that twice. Good blocking by Florida. Take a look at this all the way up the field. Look at Gamble. Again, Gamble is continually chasing his man here. Nice, nice play by Florida. But this is one of those plays that's going to teach you. Again, he's a conflict defender, right? He's playing pass and run a lot of the time. He's in the gray area. You start to get ear hold like that. You think twice about what's happening next play. That's fantastic work by Tony. It's excellent work by Florida. It's a good play call by Dan Mullen. And it's one where Florida gets a no risk 12 or 13 yard play. Now this play call is actually quite curious. We just had a good one. Now we have a curious one. We've talked about how the edge of their 3-4 linebackers, who they often had off the line entirely like this. Here's their three down linemen. They're playing a 3-4. Of course, not always four linebackers. They could be in a dime package or nickel where they had six DBs or five DBs. Regardless, their edge defender, their conflict defender, was oftentimes bailing to pass. That was their game plan. We kind of just figured it out and took advantage of it. This play call is very surprising because of it. Why? Because Florida's going to run what is essentially a screen play to Copeland where we are counting on only having one defender here, which should be this guy. But we've already seen the conflict defender has frequently been bubbling himself out here. So now this is really a two on one. You can call it a two on two, but it's not a two on two. Now, why is it not a two on two? Because Forsyth can only block one guy. He can only block one guy. And the way the play is designed, and this is why I say, again, it's not really two-on-two. Two. I mean, again, technically, it's two-on-two. Two. You're thinking, James, there's two guys there for them and two for us. Yes, you're right. But this play design is not good because Stone's assignment is the man that presumably is guarding Copeland. Again, this is the conflict defender. We're leaving him alone. We're hoping he's going to come in for run. That's what we're banking on. If he does, we have a huge play on our hands. But he doesn't. And again, it's not surprising because they've been erring towards the pass. So Stone's actually got to run past him. He does the right thing. He's supposed to do that. He runs past him. And so, yes, okay. So are we one-on-one -on -one here with this guy? Is it two-on-two? -two? Fine, yes. But the timing of this is all wrong. Copeland just now caught the football. Which means at this point in time, even though Copeland shoves him off of him, which is great, he does this, right? This is a hero play. He gains five or six yards. This particular play call was quite ill-fated. Again, quite ill-fated. The numbers are not here for this pre-snap. Pre-snap, what you're hoping to see is your safety up here, your one and lone uh, cover man here, and then this linebacker either more tucked in here, maybe on the line of scrimmage here, uh, or somewhere where in previous snaps you haven't seen him consistently bubbling out into this window We've seen them bubble consistently, and there it is again. Can this work? Yeah, sure. If we can get a block here, you can count on Copeland to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. But the timing of this is bad for you. Again, he's there. This is a line of scrimmage play, right? So you can't look in the film room and say, yeah, but look, we gained six yards. This is not sustainable. If you run this play 10 times, and this guy is as good as this guy, this play is going for zero yards. And just pre-snap, not a good look for that. So again, not going to harp on play calls that are not perfect uh, for two too long, but since this is a film study, you want to take a look at maybe what we were calling or why we were doing it. And that particular one pre-snap didn't have a great look and it wound up being a bad look post-snap, especially given the information they had been giving us. So this brings up another third and four. So we saw previously that we had a, a, the previous drive, we had a dropped pass from Zipper. Then we had a Delance sack of Kyle Trask. 
Now it's third and four again. So perhaps in the previous drive, we scored a touchdown. It's 14-10 in the second quarter. We're not that worried. Now it's third and four. It's a big conversion. Florida actually has everything they want on the bottom of the screen. Three receivers versus one and two for Vanderbilt. This is a free first down. Here's your conflict defender. He's just too far away. We mentioned on the Arkansas broadcast that I would like to see Florida push their numbers even further towards the sideline when we're running these plays because that would leave this defender just way too far away ever to be able to help on this. While Florida is further towards the sideline on this play, I think they could still be further, but that's not what's going to let them down. What's going to let them down here is that Grimes, and you can't see him, Grimes inexplicably does not immediately go block. And Grimes tends to want to block, fine, but this is, I'm not sure what he's doing. It's like he forgets he's blocking for a second and kind of starts to run a route down here at the bottom. And then because of that, it's like, oh, wait, I'm supposed to block? And he lets the only defender there. Again, we have two blockers here. This is an excellent play call. I get frustrated with east-west screens a lot. I'll talk about it. Only when the numbers don't merit it. For me, football philosophy is when the numbers are there, you take it every single time. The job of the offense is to look at what the best possible play is given the defense and take that play. You don't have a favorite play. You have the play that works. That's the play that you use. And the play that works is the one that has the numbers behind it. This is a play that works. Three versus two is a winning recipe, especially when only one of them is anywhere near the line of scrimmage. This has got to be an automatic first down. But football is a team game. You're relying on these guys to get the block here. And if they do it, we're good. Instead, Grimes is not in good position. He's going to wind up missing this entirely. And that's going to push, again, this defender right in there. And that's going to tackle Tony. Now, this is where things get interesting. Is he should have had a hero play for a loss and gotten off the field. Now, Tony's going to come around the edge. And at this point in time in the All-22, most of the Florida sideline is signaling touchdown. Because this is, in fact, a touchdown. So this should be something for Tony to clean up. We've talked about this before about Tony. Oftentimes, I think he just wants to make a juke. Because, hey, if you're that good at juking, make a juke. But at this point in time, he actually has this to the outside. And there is nobody left. There's no high side safety. There's no one left anywhere. Every other Vanderbilt player is on this side of the screen. He has a block. He has a seal. It's why the sideline is over here celebrating. They think he's about to run out this side for a score. Instead, for reasons only known to Tony, he's going to try to put his foot in the ground and do a little wiggling here, which is actually going to wind up getting him tackled. Now, again, this is happening very fast. He's going to make a little move, he's making a juke, and he's going to get tackled. But I can assure you, having watched this on the All-22 multiple times, right here you see him go to juke. He doesn't need to. If he just stays on this line to the outside, he's absolutely off to the races. There is no chance this guy can meet him over here, and he's gone. So this would have been a very special Tony play. There he goes, and instead he's tackled. We don't get the first down. We get a flag that eventually gets called off. Flag that eventually gets called off. But this would have been a touchdown. And a nice job there by Gamble, too. Like, heads up play with everyone coming back around to get blocks here. And Gamble does his job. This is sealing it off for a touchdown. So for Tony, check out this film. Take a look. Sometimes you don't need to use your electric cuts. Just get off to the races. Third down and five for Florida on the next drive. Another crucial play, obviously, for Florida, trying to convert, trying to score. We've struggled. Again, we've showed you a lot of this comes down to the play on the offensive line. A couple of plays here and there with regards to execution. Just wasn't really a clean game for Florida, and you're going to see the same thing happen here. You're going to lose this on your screen as we lose so many plays, unfortunately, in this particular broadcast. But you are going to get a post. You're going to get a corner. You're going to get a hitch. This is a good combination given the drop eight zone that you are seeing from Vanderbilt. What's going to happen for Florida, unfortunately, is they're going to drop eight as they had been doing, and they're going to rush three. Here's Lance. Here's Stone. We talked about Stone this season doing very well. He really only struggles against premier defensive ends or guys that are at least productive. Uh, he's going to struggle on this game with, with number 10 for Vanderbilt, who was very solid. We uh, talked about him coming into the game. This particular play, he is going to get beat. Again, this is why Stone's not going to play left tackle in the NFL. He's just not good enough to handle guys that can give him this kind of speed rush on the outside. So now Trask is ready to throw. 
Trask wants to throw the corner route. It just broke open. He's got a corner that's going to sit underneath this. There's a hitch route here. He has a corner route going over top. He's two on one in this corner. Corner's in perfect position. Uh, he can make a break on this. This needs to be a good throw. You'd like to see Trask drive down to make this throw. Trask is going to hesitate a little bit here. He pumps it once. He should be throwing this. He doesn't. Now he's going to make a mistake of throwing it again. And again, I think this pump happens because he sees this corner. This corner is in good position. And I think he's trying to gauge whether he has a window. He decides he has a window. It's a little late. Stone is beat. Delance is beat. You know who's not beat is Guraj. Again, by far our best offensive lineman. It's not really even a question of who's our best blocker. Heggy, of course, is solid. Uh, other guys have high potential ceilings in the future. But right now, hands down on film, it's Guraj. And again, he's doing his job. He's, he's locked up here. Everything's good. Trask being hit by a three-man rush. Just not a good look for Florida for this to be happening. Most importantly here, this ball is not being thrown to Malik Davis. If you watch on the TV broadcast, it looks like that. It is not. It is being thrown here, which you can't see. There it is. This is, in fact, a touchdown. Trask has gotten this ball to that position many times before. It's going to be a touchdown. He probably should have thrown it a touch earlier when you saw him pump it. And again, although you can't see this, this corner is squatting in between the hitch route and the corner route, doing his job very well. This probably is going to wind up being an interception, but Malik makes a heck of a play here as a DB, which is excellent by him to take away a turnover, way to help your quarterback out. So for Florida, it's a couple things here and there. It's a good play call. It's good route design. It's going to be open. It's going to be a touchdown. But we could not hold up at the line of attack. Each and every week, that's the most important thing Florida has to do because Trask is such a good decision maker. He's so accurate. If you can just hold up just long enough, he'll be able to get the job done. And Florida was unable to do so for most of the game against Vanderbilt. Second and 11, Florida. This is a crucial drive for them here late in the second quarter. Uh, Florida is, of course, going to score on this drive, and all will be right with the world. We've got Copeland running an out route here at the sticks, and this is going to be an absolute dime from Kyle Trask. Absolute dime. Garage up here holding his block. They're actually doubling at the top here with Stone, doubling here. Uh, with Heggy and Braun. And then for some reason, we're letting Delance go one-on-one, -on -one, which is curious. Delance is going to get pushed well back, as he tends to do, into the quarterback. But Trask, no worries, no fear. He's going to throw an absolutely perfect pass. Nice work by Vanderbilt dropping in the zone. They were consistent with their zone drops all game long. He's going to be over top the underneath route, underneath the over top route, with a nice clean break here coming from the over top defender. This ball has to be perfectly thrown and it is. Right to Copeland, right on time, right in the window for a first down for Florida. Another absolutely beautiful pass from Trask on this play, still in the two-minute drive. DeLance is going to get beat. Right on time to Shorter. Shorter has emerged as a very dependable receiver for Florida. We've been highlighting him on film as doing all the little things right, whether it's blocking, route running, very dependable, very trustworthy, and you see it here. Garage again right off the get-go. Gets beat with a step in, coming right into Trask's face. This is what you would like to see from your offensive line. This is what you're seeing on the right side of your offensive line. Trask still is going to be able to deliver a strike here. Shorter's going to get a first down. Florida moves the sticks. Florida's going to run a modified version of four verticals here. You're going to get a post across the screen, go route, and a go route. Vanderbilt running a, a drop eight coverage can do quite a bit on their back end. They're going to play, uh, for all practical purposes and for your purposes, they're going to wind up having three safeties. So they're going to have a middle safety, safety here, and a safety here. And they're going to play underneath with these defenders. So they're going to run and release this to their 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 uh, their zone defenders behind them, their safeties behind them. The different thing about this is typically if you're playing a traditional cover three, uh, you would actually have your your boundary safety really up against the wall here, up against the sideline, much closer than they're going to be here. Uh, this is they're going to wind up overplaying, especially on this side. They're going to overplay the seam pass. 
that is going to be relevant for why Grimes is able to score a touchdown on this play. Again, four verticals will beat a cover three. It'll beat a cover three. They sink a good amount with it. They sink a nice amount with it. That's going to let them make a play on this. This pass from Kyle Trask is absolutely perfect. It's perfect. If you look in the broadcast, you saw that Grimes was here putting his hand up, and he did have room. So if Trask was able to deliver an absolute missile, he could have thrown the ball here. Now, Trask, as we've said before, has above average arm strength. His arm strength is just fine. He does not have elite arm strength. So if you had a Trevor Lawrence on this play and he makes the right read, he can probably throw that far side rail on a rope, which is the preferable throw here. Since Trask does not have that throw in his back pocket, he instead, safety is going to be able to come over and make a play, is going to have to fit a ball over the underneath defender, but beneath the over top defender, and then give Grimes a chance to make a play, which is exactly what You've watched this on the TV broadcast. You saw a million replays of it. And this pass and this play by Grimes is absolutely Grimes, I and mean, this is just great football. Way to high point this. Great pass. Up. He's in the air. He's ready for it. Catches it. And we'll just kind of fast forward these through so you can get a million highlights here of this catch in, in fast forward mode. But this is an excellent excellent pass by Trask. I mean, this ball is just fit right where it needs to be. Nice read. Crucial touchdown for Florida. Crucial touchdown for Florida. Good defense by Vanderbilt. They really proved that they could drop into their zones very effectively. They were well coached on their zone defenses. They knew where to be. Perhaps I should have given them a bit more love and showcase on, of course, the, uh, the, the the prep for Vanderbilt. But the reality was what they were going to do was no different from what teams like Arkansas and others had done. The primary difference, like we've mentioned before, is that Vanderbilt was able to get pressure with their three down linemen. And again, a million a million shots of, uh, of Grimes making that catch for a touchdown. So last play of the half here, Trask is actually going to be able to step up and hit a pass in here. Unfortunately for him, he is going to display, very rare for him, some poor pocket presence. So right off the gate, we see that DeLance is getting pushed back, except DeLance actually gets a good seal right now. Things are okay. Heggie's beat, but things are also okay here. Stop. Set your feet. Make a throw. Everything is okay. Of course, who do you see up here? You see Garage and anything else going on frequently you see garage by the line of scrimmage that's a good sign but regardless trask runs himself into trouble here again you don't see him do this often he's not winding up to throw a bomb in fact right now he sees the throw i mentioned he sees the throw i mentioned unfortunately for him he's run himself into trouble but this was this was curious i just think this is the result of having a lot of pressure in his face with a three-man rush and he arbitrarily sped up his own clock and escaped when he didn't have to, and then tried to make a play uh, that, again, he could have made and put the Gators in field goal range. So you don't see it often, but I think this is solely the result of having uh, having pressure, especially from his right side, quite a bit, to the point to where as soon as he sees this picture right here, he's just thinking he's going to get beat. And this is obviously one of the major reasons why DeLance should not really be playing anymore as a starter on this unit in any circumstance. We need to get someone else in there. And you can see it's affecting Kyle Trask. We've talked about how well he's handled this in the past, but he escapes because he's just expecting this guy to get through. And that is going to affect his quarterback play in the future. In big games, this will definitely affect him if this is going on. Uh, this has got to get better for Florida, again, if they really want to win anything meaningful this season. So one of the adjustments Florida made in the second half was that if Vanderbilt wanted to drop eight so often, if Florida could go under center every so often and run a traditional play action, that would suck the linebackers up and not allow them just to drop straight into their pass breaks. This is going to wind up giving Florida a better a better target for the over-the-window passes. You can see that right here. This is going to hold the linebackers underneath with the play action. Now we see Stone get beat right off the get-go here. There goes Stone. He gets beat. Again, who is he getting beat by? 
He's getting beat by Vanderbilt's best pass rusher. But as we said, Stone is really consistent up until he faces a top-level guy. Then he just is limited. That's fine. That's his best. Florida's got to deal with that. Uh, again, we think we can do some things in the line here to better manage that, like putting Guraj at left tackle, Stone at right tackle, and so forth. But here we go with an absolutely ridiculous pass from Kyle Trask. Again, I want you to understand what's happening here. Look at look at Kyle Trask's feet. Look at him. What is he? How? How are you making this throw? You know, you can't really throw the ball very hard if you're going to throw it like this. Right? Guy right in his face. He's staring at the receiver. He's completely off platform. And he puts this ball over three defenders. I mean, right over these two. Again, the only reason this happens is because he had that play action, traditional play action, feathers it in for a big gain for Florida. I mean, that is just great quarterbacking by Kyle Trask, especially with, again, Vanderbilt's best pass rusher running right into his face. This is another run play that would have been a touchdown for Florida had DeLance held a block. We had showed earlier a similar play. DeLance, top of your screen. He's going to get everything he wants. He gets a dream start. He's able to get inside leverage, which is where this play is going to be going. He gets the inside leverage. Here we go. Look at this. Right now, pause this. This should be a touchdown. This right here should be a touchdown. There's nothing that Vanderbilt can do about it. Their linebackers are trapped. This line now moved. We want the line to go this way through the gap. DeLance is slowly losing his block. Again, he originally had his number back face towards us. Let's look. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. He steps inside perfectly. He's got this. He's got this. He just needs to turn this around. Turn this around to seal the hole. Turn it. Turn it. Turn it. He's losing the battle. Losing the battle. Losing the battle. And then eventually, tackle made. Again, if DeLance holds this block, if he's able to win that leverage battle I just told you about, this is, in fact, a touchdown by Florida. There's so much room for improvement in Florida's run game if we can just make that one switch. Again, one switch. DeLance comes off the field. There's a, there's quite a variety of ways we could do that. We've said in the podcast many times what we think our optimal lineup is. But regardless, uh, again and again and again, uh, Delance keeps showing up in film for the wrong reasons. Not trying to pick on Delance, just trying to illustrate that if we see it, certainly other coaches see it, uh, other teams know it, and, and obviously, you know, Coach Mullen and the staff knows it as well. We just need to make a change. That's kind of, I think, the key. The film is very, very clear that a change needs to be made here. We've talked about the tight end blocking being much improved this year, and on this touchdown one by Florida, you're going to see it. You're going to get an excellent block by Kamori Gamble coming across the formation. There it is. Bam. Seal. Touchdown. One more time. Unblocked man. Gamble finds him, heads him up, takes him out of the play. He's the only guy that really could have stopped this. And he's taken out. Nice work there by Gamble. Both Gamble and Zipper, whoever's been playing tight end for Florida in absence of Pitts and Pitts himself when he was healthy, have been blocking great all season long. It's been a tremendous positive for Florida. This play is not going to wind up counting for Florida, but we're going to show it to you because Ethan White, who came in the game, who was supposed to be a starter for Florida and is now healthy, uh, still not, still not starting. Don't really understand why, uh, but he's not. Here he is at right guard. Here he is at right guard. Again, the guy who needs to come out here. Uh, but here, here he is at right guard. He's going to pull across the formation. And watch how quick he is. Really, both him and Braun are excellent. So the fact that they're both playing right guard at the same time is kind of interesting because you like to have them both on the line at the same time. But he is going to come through, pull, and just get ready because this is how you make a block. This is how you make a block as an offensive lineman. Boom. Bye-bye. Again, this plays a holding call, not on him. One more time. Gone. I mean, that, that's what gets you pumped up. You want to run block? You want to put something on film? Gone. Erased. I mean, that's how you do it. That's just good stuff from Ethan White. 24-10 Florida at 2nd and 17. We're backed up. Something we've seen just a million times before. I'm not even going to say it. Just watch it, and you know what happens. Trask escapes the pocket. Again, he's Houdini. There he is, right? Their best pass rushers on DeLance one-on-one. -on -one. Trask feels it, escapes. Gets his head up the field. Classic little Trask finger point. Go. He is, in fact, telling Shorter to go. 
You can't see on the all 22 who he's throwing to. He's not just putting this ball up for grabs, although more open here, he was only looking at shorter. He came from inside, shorter came from outside. It's clear as day on the all 22 that he only really saw shorter. Rick Wells, again, on the inside, he only saw shorter. That's why that ball went there. It wasn't that he just didn't put enough on it. Only saw shorter. Wells also happened to be there. Shorter again contributing. Really nice play from Trask. Takes us out of a third and 20-something in what's still a close game and puts Florida into Vanderbilt territory. We mentioned the tight ends could have a big game against Vanderbilt. It was one of the best matchups. Nice play design here from Florida at the top of your screen. You'll see Kamori Gamble. He's just going to fade into the background. Trask again backpedaling, 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 expecting pressure. Doesn't see what he likes on the right side. At the last second, scans to find Kamori Gamble. Now on the all 22, you can't see Florida's route combinations here. Vanderbilt does a good job covering everybody but Gamble. And take a look at Trask's head. He very quickly, he's going to scan the right. He's going to scan here. He's going to snap back. He's going to pick again here the middle on this drag. Oh, on this drag route coming across, which I just accidentally rewound our play. Here we go. Right side, left side. Checked right here. You can't see it. He's on your screen. He's checking the drag across. Doesn't like it. Comes back across here at the end and hits the only open receiver he had. What's really amazing about Trask is how often he does, in fact, choose the best receiver to throw the football to. That is not an easy thing to do, and he's often doing it being pressured. He does it here. There was one guy to get this ball to. He picks the right guy. Winds up being a touchdown for Florida. You're going to get the telestration from ESPN, not for me. But as we showed you, and really more importantly here, take a look at Trask's eyes. Reads right. Takes a look. Now he's going to read this measure, this drag coming right across the middle of the field is what he's reading here. There it is. Isn't like that. There's Tony. Notice Tony being bracketed. Tony's double covered to the right of your screen. Here's Tony. He's doubled. So Trask looks right, looks at Tony, sees the mesh. This is your mesh route. We've covered this before. Doesn't like either one of those. Covered, double covered. And then finally, right at the end, comes on to the last one because they wound up double covering Tony on the mesh. They lose contact with Gamble. And what you wind up getting is a nice Florida touchdown. This is great coverage by Vanderbilt, really all the way across the board. And Trask basically reads every single receiver Florida has out there. And again, that is high, high level quarterbacking. Nice high ball, easy touchdown. Great, great stuff. There's a reason why Dan Mullen loves the quarterback run, and we have showed it to you before. We'll show it to you again. Here, Florida is going to have six linemen blocking, one tight end, of course, but six effective linemen on the line blocking. And this is going to set up a very good situation numbers-wise for Florida. Vanderbilt has five here plus one, which is six, plus another one here, which is potentially seven. Potentially seven. Florida has seven of their own plus a quarterback, which is eight. But if you've seen on previous breakdowns, if Florida wants to run the ball right, this defender is not going to get in there, which will give Florida a plus one advantage to either side it wants to run the football on in this formation. And that's exactly what we see. In this situation, Florida gets a bonus because they actually send the conflict defender in to cover the Tony screen. Again, this is what Tony does for you. Tony attracts a lot of attention. So really well-designed run. They go to the weak side. Trask then puts a move on, almost gets away from the safety. But this is why Dan Mullen likes this. Is if you take a player like Tony, who you know is probably going to suck in a conflict defender, they're not going to want to let him get the ball, then you're able to run plus two, plus two with your best, one of your best pulling blockers there in Guraj coming through the hole first. That's going to allow you to pick up 10 to 12 yards very, very easily. If you're able to have a Kyle Trask-like passer with an amazing runner, of course, you have one of the greatest college quarterbacks of all time in that regard. Very rarely will you get that kind of combination. But that's why Dan Mullen likes to run the balls. It's bread and butter. It's one of the things he likes the best, although I particularly don't love quarterback runs. Schematically, it often can be very, very sound. And that's why Dan Mullen 1.0, Urban Meyer 1.0 existed and did so well. Uh, for so long as you can get very favorable numbers situation, especially if you have another dynamic playmaker like Tony on the field. 
This is a creative play from Florida to get Tony the ball effectively on an east-west screen. They're going to bring him in motion. Vanderbilt not playing. Man, we know how much they've been dropping eight in the zone, but they've also been frequently dropping into a cover three. So if we bring him in man, they're going to drop him out. He's going to wind up being responsible for the flats. Florida knows this. So by motioning as opposed to starting here stationarily, it's a little bit of a sneak attack. Xavier Henderson then gets the block. We've dropped the corner into the part of your picture here. Ball gets to Tony, and now Tony has space. Not to mention, we're bringing in DeLance here on the outside to get a block. And now we're setting up a chance for Tony to have a big play. Tony does get out. And unfortunately for him, and really rather remarkably, he does not fumble more often because he's making so many of these moves where the ball's really jostling around. It's surprising his ball security is so good. And again, unfortunately for him, he does get it punched out. That is going to happen time to time. Vanderbilt falls on it, but a nice play design there by Florida to spring that play in the first place. We've seen this type of cover three beater used by Florida before. This time, Florida's going to use it to the empty side where you have no receiver. There's no receiver here. Nobody here, just gamble. But it's still going to work. Why? Because you're still going to get a cover three from Vanderbilt. So this corner is going to drop on the snap. He's going to be your flats defender. He's going to take anything in this box that you see here. So Gamble is going to wind up running a little out route that's going to let him get passed off and then turn up the sideline, essentially in between this defender and this one, making this a nice, easy completion for Florida. Very creative play. Good play from the one-yard line. There it is. Again, you can see his eyes are in the backfield. He's looking for the running back to come out here. Any route that's going to wind up being run in here, he's going to pass off anything deep to his corner here. Florida's going to send this go route out here to give this corner some eye candy. Take him off of this route. Trask doing what he always does so well. Looking here, which is pulling the defender this way. Keeping the safety at bay. All in all, Trask knows exactly where he wants to go. And that's there. And that's just excellent, excellent quarterbacking. Again, we haven't got to highlight this a lot today because of how Vanderbilt was playing defense and the pressure that was going on. They weren't using a lot of single high safety. But in this more typical, this more typical cover three because they've brought Extra guys into the box area. Trask moves the safety, allows him to then hit this pass over the top of the flat defender. And this turns into a huge gain by Gamble. Great to see Gamble consistently contributing. Really nice use again of Florida's tight ends in this game. So now Emery comes into the game. For a lot of Florida fans, this was unfortunate timing. Uh, most people wanted to have Trask keep his four touchdown streak. We're going to use this on film study. Of course, to illustrate why, again, Dan Mullen likes to run the quarterback. If you can get favorable numbers, you can make good things happen. So again, teams that are going to play three down linemen, as we illustrated last week, are ripe to be run on by a quarterback because the conflict defenders can't get all the way over here in time. Florida on the line is going to have uh, you know, seven guys, right? There's seven, eight, nine, ten, and then Emery makes 11. So they have seven here. Vanderbilt has three, four, five, six, seven. But the problem is that they can't have seven on this side of the field. So that's going to allow Florida to take candy from a baby here, so to speak, take the snap. And again, this defender against a running quarterback, a quick quarterback, is never going to get there. He's just never going to get there. And he doesn't. He's out of the play. And then there goes Emery. If he makes that safety miss, this is in fact a touchdown, which is why he was frustrated. He knew he was off to the races. But that is why running in Dan Mullen's system is so dangerous. You effectively cannot employ these conflict defenders as they're being employed. And eventually over time, what happens is you either have to bring him onto the line of scrimmage, which then is going to allow three on three here. Uh, it allows a whole host of things to happen. Do you bring another guy in the line of scrimmage? How do you counter this? That allows better slant windows. There's all sorts of things you can do. And again, it's one of the reasons why that's very effective. Do I love this style of football? No. The reason is eventually teams get athletic enough and strong enough to take away your quarterback run. And if that is a big part of your offense, it makes your running quarterback have to pass the ball a lot. And that becomes difficult. Same thing here. And one of the reasons why we did this long film study was it was the Vanderbilt game was interesting. It gave us so many plays to look at that were sort of staple Dan Mullen plays also a team dropping eight all the time. Staple issues of Florida's offense that I just covered probably too much. Probably too much. But here we are again. Number situation. Same thing we just saw. 
Florida motions the tight end, and you're basically going to get the same exact play. This defender is not playing defense anymore. Florida's plus one. I'm sure Dan Mullen is grinning ear to ear when he calls these plays because this is old school Dan. And again, he loves this. This is his favorite. One more time, just because he loves it. Pulls across. Nobody there. Nice, easy seven or eight yard gain. Now, second and two, it's a good place to give Emery a shot here to pass. Very similar formation we saw earlier. They now, of course, do what I just talked about them potentially doing. They're going to load up on the line of scrimmage because they're tired of Emory running. They want to equalize these numbers. That is going to give Florida, again, a very simple pass. So does Emory Jones need to be Kyle Trask? No. Why? Because he can run much better than Kyle Trask. Does Dan Mullen need to incorporate more of the, the Kyle Trask-like elements, attacking downfield and et cetera, to win championships? Yes. You know, I don't think that Dan Mullen 1.0, so to speak, or the spread option offenses of the mid-2000s can win in modern-day football. But again, against a team like Vanderbilt, here's one of the reasons why it's just absolutely so effective, is this is an easy throw. You're not going to have to make reads if you're Emory Jones that Kyle Trask has to make because Kyle Trask would never get this kind of defense in this formation. So essentially what Emory's able to get, what Emory's able to get is a pre-snap, easy as can be, two-on-two situation. Very simple. And all they're going to have us do, look at this, Gamble's just going to run a really easy out route where he's got leverage, right? He's already further outside. It's a foot race to the edge. Really easy throw here. Sling it to the outside. Emory with a nice hard throw. Ball should be here in a perfect world. Ball gets on him quickly enough, though, that he's able to make a turn. The turn actually helps on a better thrown ball. He probably takes a better angle. Slightly underthrown ball. He comes downhill, takes a bad angle. And then he's going to wind up missing this tackle. Nice block downfield there by Zipper. So Florida with two tight ends in. Zipper with a nice block. Nice touchdown by Gamble. Again, great day by Gamble. Great day by the tight ends. But a nice illustration of the progress of what it looks like when you're running uh, you're running plays with a quarterback, and then that opens up a really simple throw, a safe throw to the outside that turns into a touchdown on just a really a two or three yard pass. All right, last play we're going to show you, and the reason is we do get a very different offensive line formation. Of course, we're late in the game. Uh, this is not what we think would be the optimal, you know, this year scenario, but you do get Guraj at left tackle where we think he should be playing. We would put Stone at right tackle, but in this case, you get the four star, very talented Tarquin there. Uh, at right guard, you're going to have Braun, who we've mentioned already multiple times. Very, very solid. At center, you get uh, Kingsley, who I haven't seen much of him yet, uh, a three-star. At left guard, you get Ethan White, another three-star. And then, of course, you get four-star here, Garage. So this, this lineup would not be the one that you would project to start for Florida, but you are getting some young and talented guys in there. And, of course, you do have... Delance out and garage at left tackle. So you have a couple of things that you may expect to see. And Ethan White uh, with Braun. So you have two of your biggest, most upside guards in the game. Garage at left tackle. And we see on this play right away, really nice seal on the outside. And that winds up being a nice run for someone we have not seen a lot of, which is Lorenzo Lingard. So nice to see him get a carry. I'm sure he's feeling good about that. Trask is happy about it. One more time. Let's take a look here. Braun from his guard spot comes into here to get a seal. Here we go. There's Tarquin. Right tackle. Not a perfect block from him, but either way, it springs Lingard. He's free. And that's a nice play. Nice gain. Nice play. Kyle Trask loves it. Florida's offense, although slow to get going, wound up racking up a lot of yards. As you can see from the film study, Really just missed a couple of plays here and there uh, for a variety of reasons. Nothing that I think is systemic outside of obviously Delance at right tackle. A lot of these things just happen sometimes in a football game. Regardless, it shows you how good Florida's offense is. That despite some of the miscues, despite some of the setbacks, they still racked up nearly 600 yards of offense and won on the road against Vanderbilt by 21 points. Uh, scoring 38 in their own right against a team that was frequently dropping eight and getting pressure. So all those things are good signs. Again, it's really a tale of two teams. Florida's offense, even when it struggles, still does well. Florida's defense, when it even does well sometimes, still tends to struggle. Uh, again, we will see what happens in the future. 
Uh, but right now, Florida's offense, ne next up challenge with Kentucky. And until then, I'm James from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, and I hope you enjoyed this film breakdown. <laughs>